So I'm going to talk about Ultrasat, the design of the thermal uh, control system of the of the Ultrasat camera. Ultrasat is a collaboration between um, Desi and some Israel partner, partners that are here listed. Um, Desi, Elbit, uh, Optoelectronics is the Israel Aerospace Industries (STA) from the from the U.S. in California, and the Weizmann Institute in Israel. And we have. Uh, mission to be launched i would present later in 2025 and i'm one of the thermal engineers of the of the project uh, let's say in charge of the thermal control design and system uh, and system of the ultrasat camera which should be at 200 kelvin minus 73 centigrades i'm sorry but i cannot translate it directly to fahrenheit i'm sorry about that <laughs> um Ultrasat is uh, an astronomical mission, which is mainly an early warning system for space observations like LIGO or Virgo for astronomical events, um, which should be in permanent communication in GEO and should be able to reorientate its uh, shape in around or less than five, 15 minutes. It's led by the Weizmann Institute in Israel and the Israeli Space Agency. The satellite is built by, by II, Israel Aerospace Industries. The telescope, which is a SMI telescope, is built by, by ALOP, which is a part of Elvis Systems. And the camera is built by, let's say, by us, by DESI in Germany, which we are like specialized in characterization of different kinds of sensors for for different as mainly ground applications. And this is, I think, the first space application for, for us. The CDR was conducted in the Q2 of, the, of this year, and the launch is expected to be in 2025. The launch mass will be around one ton, 1,000 kilograms. And the goals uh, scientific uh, will be to explore and to detect uh, kilonovas, the mergers of binary stars, a little bit of the origin of the heaviest elements in the space, also to, to check the space on rate and some of the supernova explosions that are taking taking on. The the main thing of the of the telescope I didn't explain it so well, but I think it's the the wide field uh, angle that this has. As I think as we are, if we compare in the UB and ultraviolet. Uh, the last uh, big mission, which was Fermi, was around one, ang one degree of white angle. And we are talking here about 200 degrees. So it's, it's a very huge improvement. The satellite looks like this. Uh, it's going to be developed by II, which is a 3.5 meters. Uh, uh, it's a satellite with uh, six panels, uh, separation ring and a big uh, solar panel and the top is located the Smith telescope developed by Alop. And inside of the Smith telescope design, we are developing, sorry, this was not planned, the detector assembly, uh, which is mounted on four spiders and it has a, let's say a cooling, cooling side here to heat pipes that are like ending on the radiator of the satellites. And another part of the detector assembly, which is the part that I'm going to talk today, which is a 40, 140 millimeters times 140 millimeters, which is around, I don't know, I think it's six times six uh, inches and five kilograms uh, is the remote electronics, which is located on the satellites on one of the panels. But uh, I'm going to focus only on the detector assembly because it's the part which is going to be cooled down and let's say actively maintained by the thermal control system. Um, in order or to reduce the dark current of the sensors, we need to cool down the sensors to around 200 Kelvin. This is minus 73 uh, degrees so centigrade. Um, we have a thermal chain, which is cooling down till the radiator formed by mainly by thermal straps um, from our side and two heat pipes for redundancy, also two thermal straps 
from the development part of the satellite MB, MB, uh, developers and also two heat pipes which are like uh, coming up on the radiator and from the radiator we are let's say releasing all the heat all the plastic losses to the space we have uh, three parts which are heated and thermally controlled which are let's say the sensors or the tile which are sitting let's say below the sensors the evaporator of the let's say satellite developer and the radiator mm, if we focus a little bit on the camera the camera has three main parts the optomechanical uh, sites which is formed by a mosaic of four tiles and four sensors which is bonding and packaged by uh, semiconductor technologies application sta in the in california in the in the us and we have some several requirements of flatness and alignment to ensure that the tel smith telescope is on focus because it's a really stringent kind of telescope that if you are out of focus you will not see anything which is in every telescope but i think in this case is the amount of microns is very limited and we have the thermal side, which is built directly below of the, of the mechanical part. We have four straps connected to each tile to remove the extra heat received by the sensors. And then we trans transport this heat outside of the telescope by means of two heat pipes of propylene. And we isolate the whole, let's say, cold side of the detector assembly by means of flexors made of plastic or mainly of Ulten 1000. And we have also a part of, uh, of electronics, which is mainly like formed by some flex, flex rigids and several PCBs that are cable or connected to the readout electronics on the, on the satellites. If we go through the thermal design and thermal requirements, we need to be always on 200 Kelvin plus minus five during the whole mission during, during operation. And for each exposure of five minutes, we need to be always in a delta of temperature of one Kelvin. This includes either the integration part and the readout part. And we have on the other side an optical requirement from the telescope that they, let's say, which is like, we call it the frame, which is here, let's say the uh, titanium part, which is sustaining or maintaining the detectors in place, um, should be at the same temperature of the telescope, which will, will be more or less the environment and should be at more or less at ambient temperature, 25 degrees or something like that. And several times during the mission, uh, since the UV is very sensitive to contamination issues, we will need to heat up the, the sensors to release of all the dust and several particles that are coming to the, to the detectors at a temperature of 338 Kelvin or 348. How do we, do we reduce, let's say, the parasitic losses coming up from the sensor? From because of the difference of temperature, we use some ultim flexors to reduce the, the heat flows. And let's say we coat as a typical use like the tetra assembly with uh, some goldish uh, surfaces. And we cool it the sensor by means of uh, straps and heat pipes directly to the, to the radiator in like two stages because of integration issues. Um, we stabilize the temperature by, by three different heaters. Uh, we have, um, firstly, uh, three heaters with two watts of power per tile, which means that we have 24 watts on the sensor side to maintain. I mean, at the end, we will use around one watt or 1.5 watts for the upper nominal, nominal operation, and we will use something like all the power that we can use for the decontamination campaign. And on the other side, we have also available some uh, extra heat power on the satellite 
evaporator here and on the radiator 200. This is mainly for, for the decontamination operation, which is a little bit complicated. And I will not talk on this uh, in detail in this presentation. We have three kinds of modeling. Firstly, we have a, like a kind of simplified thermal model, which is mainly in Excel in steady states is for preliminary sizing of the components. And we share it with our two partners. And then we have mainly two models for simulations, which will be like an end-to-end -end model. We consider the, the entire thermal chain and a finite element model. In the end-to-end, -end, we use Open Modelica as also for the thermal mathematical model. We simulate in a steady state and transient with the best and worst case scenarios. In this manner, we can dimension the radiator and the heaters and do some several sensitive studies, which is the most affecting parts of the of our design. And this is a kind of exchange between our, our partners. And we have also the finite element model, which is mainly used for to ensure the local temperature effects and to couple with the thermomechanical simulations, which are very relevant to be, as I said, in the in the focus. Uh, point of the telescope and we change also this this model with the partners and um, we have uh, actually around three main thermal cases we have the case that the camera is on is an operation and it's as we call it imaging it's here when it's on and it's imaging and the telescope could be in a cold stage which will be like 19 degrees or 25 degrees, which will be the hot imaging. And the camera could be off. And then we need to think if we are in a contamination campaign or in an empowered case, which will be launch, safe mode, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, what we have done till now for the CDR is we have analyzed in ANSYS all the cases in steady state and also all the uh, cases for thermal transient open modelica and with ANSYS for thermal transient we have only checked the imaging mode with a reduced model and we have ensured that the that all the requirements were fulfilled for the camera and i show you one of the examples yes for for completing this uh, we do a let's say for the um, for the imaging mode we have done some for example some Im simulations for images of 300 seconds as i said five minutes and we consider 280 seconds for integration and 20 seconds for readout and we can see that the for example the the frame it, man it is maintained at 290 degrees uh, 90 90 kelvin sorry and uh, let's say what we call die package, which will be the sensor assembly. It's at around 197 Kelvin. And there are different parts of the thermal chain going down as the heat pipes of the camera and the temperature of the radiator. It's coming at 170 Kelvin. On the other side, we can see also um, the finite element simulation in steady state where we have our, let's say, hottest points at 304 Kelvin, which is uh, ready to the PCBs that are underneath the thermal parts, as we have seen before. And we can see that the radiator, which is the lowest temperature, is at 170 Kelvin. Here, I have also plotted a little bit of the distribution of the sensor in a wind mile configuration. And we can see that in the, the variation, sorry, the variation in Kelvin is around 0 0.32 for the steady state simulation. Uh, I have also some simulations in, in the backup if you want to see it later. And as a summary, uh, I think we have uh, performed a, a simulation for the thermal design analysis for all of the operation mode with the best and worst cases. We have seen the required or the required thermal stability was achieved with the active thermal control. And for that, we need 
or we needed for the simulations for imaging a variation between 1.3 and 7.4 as a 7.4 watts this is mainly because of the albero and variation of the orientation of the satellites that we are coping with with the sensors then um, when the camera off we will need around 17 watts also 5 watts in the camera and 12 watts on the satellite this could be a little bit changed in the, in the later stages to reduce a little bit the consumption if we put everything in the camera and for the decontamination we will need for the heating up around 16 watts on the camera as without with redundancy and 60 watts on the satellite side and for the steady state we will need three as a 13.5 and 25 degrees on the satellite and as the thermal requirements the sensor surface can be maintained always within one kelvin during 300 seconds and we are already building a development model of the camera to verify the performance of the thermal control system as uh, we want to acknowledge also like all of the ultrasat camera advisory board that we have different people from dlr ohv as andre maria norbert kappelman and i don't know harry michaelis akim peters christensa simon Antonio, nick palman and john Wilms, and also to the institute of planetary research of the dlr for their advice almost at any time which is helping us a lot for the development i think this will be from my side and if you have any questions uh go ahead Okay, thank you very much. Um, I don't think we have any questions at the moment, but uh, I just wanted to ask you, um, you have to reject the heat using radiator, obviously, you mentioned that. Yes. Do you have any considerations as to the radiator getting damaged over time from micrometeorites or debris or anything? Or do you have any um, any sort of plans and, and how would that change your uh, your control mechanisms? Um, in principle, we have, the, let's say, the beginning and end of life variations uh, and yeah, for the different impacts and so on, I will, I can ask to the college of the satellite development and I can address your question back because I, this, I don't know, honestly. Okay, all fair. Um, we do have a question here, because space is in a vacuum, did you only consider radiative heat loss mechanism did you only consider radiative heat, lo heat loss mechanisms only um yes yes because we are in in a space I'm not sure if i understood the question but we are considering vacuum um let's say environment And I'm assuming since the sensor is not operational during launch, you don't really have to worry about things happening during the launch time when the satellite's still on Earth and being prepared. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. I'm not. I'm not. I mean, we don't have to worry at all in principle, but we're going to maintain um, the sensor at 25 degrees the whole time during launch, mainly because we have these small flexures on the like maintaining the mosaic assembly and this is very tiny and these are made of plastic and we are let's say not so worried but a little bit worried that if we cool down um during launch and we have some let's say some cold environment in our plastic they will become a little bit more brittle and if we add this let's say thermoelastic effort or load with the loads of the launch we may have some or we are going to reduce our safety factor on the on the flexures and we don't want this i mean we want to be always above three or even four depending on which one or one of the plastic flexors are I mean, three factor safety always in the, in the design so therefore we're going to maintain the temperature of the flexors at ambient temperature till we achieve gto okay 
So the sensor will be at 25 degrees till GTO in summary. Excellent. Okay, I think we'll give it another minute. Oh, here we go. Um, was there a thermal strap used to couple the heat pipe for the camera to the heat pipe shown for the radiator? It appears to be a short thermal strap between the two. Yeah. What is the question? I mean, uh, it's a statement or it's a question? No, the first part is a question there. Okay. And so was so there, there a thermal is, strap used to couple the is, heat pipe for the there camera? There is a strap, exactly. Here you can see it in this, in this small picture. I mean, here we have, let's say, the condenser of our heat pipe, let's say our, uh, sorry, this, let's say the camera heat pipe, and then we have a thermal strap, probably of graphite, if I'm not mistaken, to the second heat pipes. So, uh, so the follow-up question here is, did that limit performance? Very short distance, so maybe not, question mark? Um, I think no. Uh, we have, of course, we have a lim as little bit limited performance in our straps because they are not made of graphene or graphite and they're very small. And we choose uh, to use copper only because we want to reduce any risk. But it's true that, I mean, if we, if we have made everything in a row with the heat pipes, that will be more performant. But as I said, very, very shortly, I'm sorry about that. I mean, because of integration reasons, we need to, let's say, to install the sensor and the first heat pipes on the telescope. And from there, the telescope will be installed in the satellite. So it's like a kind of puzzle and we need to, to mount firstly our parts on the telescope and the telescope will be on the, on the spacecraft. And therefore we cannot, let's say, put directly the full piece. Um, inside so therefore we we split both okay uh, um, thanks uh follow up for that is not really a question just a statement it just says allows for camera level testing prior to integration good plan so good plan <laughs> we did have another question coming here though um where in the heat path heat pipes thermal straps etc is your largest thermal resistance um it's in fact is the second thermal strap, this one, and the other thermal straps. So this, uh, so both thermal straps are the, let's say, the, the bottlenecks, but we need to live with them because we need to avoid any displacement on the sensors. So this is, this is a kind of, uh, we need to live with them. I mean, I think it's, it's the answer to that, I mean, it's a kind of trade-off. I mean, we could be a little bit more risky and try to to say, okay, we go directly with heat pipes integrated and embed it. But uh, my opinion, this will be very risky because we will have we resist many deformations because because of the mismatch of the aluminium and the the sensors that are made of uh, something close to to silicon in the CTE. So we need to this kind of mechanical decoupling between both. Yeah, I, I think I can perfectly understand the, the desire to mechanically decouple that. You have a pretty low margin of error on the sensor's placement there. Uh, okay, we did have another question for you. Was structural analysis performed to confirm that the flexures and or the Alt-M design can withstand launch loads and CET, CTE mismatch due to the thermal gradients? Yeah, it's it's done. Uh, therefore, we decide also to to maintain all the all the flexors at twenty five degrees. I mean, to not not superpone or some some both effects.